not once, not twice, more than twice, blind people. That one lady had a, uh, a stroke on the optic nerve, a nurse uh, mm -hmm. from, from London, very smart lady. Just certain point in the middle of the event, she was doing a walking meditation at, on the beach uh, with a thousand other people there. And, and uh, it occurred to her that maybe she should think about healing her eyes, you know? So that she went into uh, the meditation in the, the same day and she laid down after we finished the meditation and she said it was like someone taking cellophane, crack, pull, you know, crackling it in her head. She felt something going on inside her brain and she was crying because she knew something oh spectacular God. was happening. And she didn't want to open her eyes and then the, the, the meditation ended and she said when I opened my eyes it was like I was seeing so much brighter. And she said I could see no blind spot. Imagine we have research to show, and this is such a duality, that when you start seeing the brain start synchronizing, getting coherent, mm -hmm. from the front of the brain and the back of the brain, the two hemispheres coming together, and you, mm -hmm. we can say to scientists that come and study our work, oh, watch this, Ed's gonna pop. What do you mean? Just watch, this is gonna be good. And all of a sudden you see this brain going into this kind of psychic union, the heart blows wide open, you see coherence going on, and you look around at that person, and there's tears running down their face. Imagine feeling so whole that it's impossible to want. I mean, how can yeah. you want when you're whole? Because you feel like you already have it. Now, yeah. when you reach that point, that's when the magic happens because now you are worthy to receive. Yeah. And the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving. Yeah. You know, for me, I mean, I'm curious and I'm a pragmatist. I mean, if you tell me something, all I wanna know is how I'm gonna use it in my life. And, yes. And I'm not into dinner conversation because nobody changes from that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm a doer and I wanna be around doers. And mm -hmm. you, you get a group of people that are passionate about transformation and they, they've done some of the work. When we were doing our four day, four and a half day uh, advanced workshops, right around the end of the event, I was seeing people starting to know, seeing some really great transformations, and I thought... This is the pop. Yeah, it's a pop, yeah. mean, big pops. Yeah. And, and we were like, we had to send them home. Mm. And I was like, oh God, man, if I could just have them for a week. Mm -hmm. So we created these week-long events where people retreat from their lives. Okay. And they remove the constant stimulation in their external environment yeah. that reminds them of who they think they are yes. as a personality. Yes. They separate themselves from the people they know and yep. the places they go and the things that they do at a certain mm -hmm. amount of time in their routine mundane mm -hmm. life. So mm -hmm. we'll bridge a little quantum physics with a little neuroscience, a little neuro ep uh, endocrinology, a little epigenetics, yep. uh, psychoneuroimmunology. Those are all sciences about possibility. And I now know that if you can give people sound scientific information, for me, that's the language. I know. And then if they can turn to the person next to them and explain it, you're not gonna get off the hook. Yeah. If you can't explain it, it's not wired in your brain. Mm. But if you can build a model and explain it, you're installing the neurological hardware in your brain in preparation for the experience. So the more you understand what you're doing and why, the how gets easier because you can assign meaning to it. Mm. So then if I can set up the conditions and the environment and give them the proper instructions and push the envelope a little bit, yeah. And people who get their behaviors to match their intentions and their actions equal to their thoughts, they get their mind and body working together, they're gonna have a new experience. And the experience then is not only gonna enrich the philosophical circuits in their brain, because experience does that, but it's gonna produce an emotion. So they're gonna start feeling more unlimited. They're gonna start feeling more free. Now they're teaching their body chemically to understand what their mind is intellectually understood. So if you've done it once, you should be able to do it again. If you can repeat it, you will neurochemically condition your mind and body to begin to work as one. In other words, the body will start to learn how to do it as well as the mind, and you won't have to consciously think about it any longer. So it gets mm. easier, right? So we, we follow that format, and the first couple days is that getting beyond your life, yes. getting beyond your emotions, everybody's gotta do it, but if you just keep applying the formula, keep going, mm. and I keep reminding you, and keep building the model, and give, I give them numerous opportunities to connect okay. and numerous opportunities to overcome themselves. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you're just gonna figure it out. It doesn't matter, you're just gonna figure it out. And when you do, then we start seeing now these incredible transformations and changes. And it's like a four minute mile. 
that evidence is the loudest voice. Sure. It is the loudest voice. And so we've got all the brain scans, we've got all the heart rate m measurements, we got great measurements on immune regulation, how you can strengthen your immune system by thought alone. We have great measurements on, on that you could actually change your genes in, in four days, lengthen your telomeres, lengthen your life within 60 days, you know, change your neurotransmitters, change the energy around your body, the energy centers of your body, and change all this stuff. And so that's the scientific evidence, but the evidence of people now is really, is really the laboratory. What's the side effect of a person then who begins to make significant changes in just mastering that formula? Well, the side effect is a remission from a health condition. So we have seen not once, not twice, more than twice, blind people. That one lady had a, a stroke on the optic nerve, a nurse uh, mm -hmm. from, from London very smart lady, and um, a lesion was on the optic nerve and it created a blind spot yes. uh, in her visual field mm -hmm. from six o'clock to nine o'clock. So she can't see right. anything there. And so she lost her license, she has, a, she has her own company, uh, she couldn't read emails, and sooner or later your brain accommodates a little bit, but right. not fully. Mm -hmm. And so the typical prognosis with a stroke uh, when there's neurological damage that if, it, if your brain doesn't recover within two weeks it's gonna stay it's gonna stay the same yep. and slowly get worse yep. she has great relationships with all the physicians and they all said yeah you're gonna have to learn to live with it mm. and believe it or not one doctor said hey why don't you try going to this event and this nurse nurses are practical people mm. I mean they're super practical people you want to want to get a good doctor ask a nurse right. and they're just very very practical so she she did all she did the online course she did both the courses she read all the books she did all the meditations and she came to the event with the intention of learning how to live with her condition mm. it didn't occur to her fully mm. that she could heal it and she went because she wanted to start a nonprofit uh, to help people wow so she went with a doctor that recommended uh, the work just a certain point in the middle of the event she was doing a uh, walking meditation at on the beach uh, with a thousand other people there and, and uh, it occurred to her that maybe she should think about healing her eyes, you know, so that she went into uh, the meditation and the same day and she laid down after we finished the meditation and she said it was like someone taking cellophane, crack, pull, you know, crackling it in her head. She felt something going on inside her brain and she was crying because she knew something spectacular was happening. And she didn't want to open her eyes and then the, the, the meditation ended and she said when I opened my eyes it was like I was seeing so much brighter and she said I could see no blind spot and she would the doctor was laying right next to her and she was sobbing they were hugging oh each other gosh. so she went on the Monday morning to get her eyes the visual mm -hmm. fields measured and you can see on the the, the pre measurement just a black quarter of the sphere of the circle was mm -hmm. just all black in other mm -hmm. words blindness mm -hmm. You see the post measurement on the Monday morning after the event. There isn't a black spot. Unbelievable. Complete restoration of, uh, of mm. sight. Now, if you ask me if that was possible two years ago, I would say, yeah, it's possible theoretically. Mm -hmm. But now, this is the four minute mile. When they close their eyes and they do their next meditation, their acceptance, their belief, and their ability to surrender and trust mm -hmm. that it could happen to them becomes greater. What I want our, our community to do is say, what is standing in the way mm -hmm. between me and my ability to connect to that field? Mm -hmm. Because I want to eliminate every belief, That's every cool. emotion, every past, you know, whatever. I want to remove all of those veils. Why am I doing this? Because I want to get so good at this. We, we have yeah. some MIT researchers that are going to organize all the data, 50%. We want, I want to get to 50% and then we are going to walk into Children's Hospital oh and we're going to gosh. say, what kids, just mm. give us your kids. We won't, we won't touch them, we don't mm. want any money, all we want to do is help. Mm. And um, I think that is... Uh, that's amazing. That's a living organism called the human beings. That are, that the living organism, the human being, the age of selfish individuality has to end right now. Mm. The living organism has to take care of one another. They have to heal one another. They have to teach one another. They have to exchange important information amongst one another. They have to shine for one another, not to be outstanding and competitive, but to show others that they can shine. That's, that's the only way we're gonna make our way out of this mess. So in order for you to, to really begin to explore the unknown aspect of yourself, 
you got to learn how to get beyond the known aspect of yourself. yourself. And if you keep coming back to the known, you're going to miss mm -hmm. out on the unknown. So you would say, well, I don't know anything in the unknown. Of course, it's the unknown. And if you mm -hmm. try to control it there, you're back to the known. If you try to predict it, you're back to the known. So mm -hmm. you got to go through this trial and error of just kind of refining your attention, refining your ability. And, and it's just got to be something like playing tennis or playing golf or doing martial arts or working out or crocheting or yeah. dancing the salsa. Yeah. You just got to keep going.